Hello and welcome to Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. Now since COVID, flying has become really expensive, but Vietnam Airlines are offering pretty cheap uh, premium fares. Now I flew here with them in premium economy and that video is already on my channel, but I'm really keen to check out their business class product and that's what I'm doing tonight. So join me and I'll show you what it's like. I'm Paul Stewart and I make videos about planes, one train and a massive rocket. This includes trip reports from flights around the world and tours through interesting aircraft in museums. If you're into these types of videos, then please check out my channel and subscribe. I was arriving from a domestic flight from Da Nang and there was a short walk to the international terminal. I feel like I'm pretty reasonable at finding my place around airports, although the signage and general order of this place left a little bit to be desired. I followed this sign up to what I assumed was departures and after a few levels of escalators I arrived at what ended up being an observation point to watch people check in and drop off their luggage. I was kinda hoping to actually be down there to drop off my bag and get my boarding pass rather than looking from above. I ended up going back down the escalators and headed back out to the front of the airport and eventually found the proper entrance, which admittedly looked like an exit with all of those barriers moving people away from the doors. Anyway, I guess it's all a part of the novelty of visiting a new unfamiliar place and maybe I just missed some more obvious signs elsewhere. There were no queues in the business class line so I was immediately checked in and directed to customs. Now unlike the domestic terminal, there was no separate line that I could see anyway, although after that there was a separate security line for business class, crew and diplomats. This was being monitored and the fellow behind me who snuck in after me was caught and sent back to the other lane. Once airside, I was off to check out the two lounges called Lotus Lounges, which are open to business class passengers and frequent flyers for both the Vietnam Airlines and Sky Team Alliance Airlines. The signs continued to be a little confusing, or at least for my little brain, and I went up the elevator to level 3 and then more walking around and eventually found the lounge. I'm trying to avoid making it a bit of a joke, but it really was a unique airport to navigate around. Here we are in the first of two lounges, and I believe this was the one that has been recently refurbished. There's plenty of seating with these semi-private booths and some views of the airport apron, although this was at 8pm so it was dark outside. Next to the food, there's also a whole lot of tables. Down the end, there's this pet area which is something I've never seen at an airport and possibly a good spot to leave wandering toddlers up pets. There's also this semi-private area hidden behind some plants with a massage chair and worth grabbing if you prefer some seclusion. And next to that is a business centre with several computers and a printer. Now let's check out the food. There was a decent selection of both hot and cold food, including what appeared to be breakfast with sausages, bacon and eggs. There were also these pre-prepared plates of different hot meals, including pho, which I'll show you shortly, and many other things which I can't pronounce. There's this display here because I visited the day after Christmas Day, December 26, and then moving around the corner are the drinks with this coffee machine, many different hot drinks, uh, soft drinks, and eventually some alcohol. There were a few spirits and wine from Chile and France. Here's the pre-prepared pho which is in these plates and you just add some soup and there's these bits for you to add at the end. Well, I think that's what they're for. I took my pho over to enjoy the view with some other fruit drinks. One minor complaint, which became an issue as I was sitting here for 3 hours and my battery is close to retirement, was that there were very limited power plugs. In a world of COVID, which thankfully is becoming less of an issue, and wars etc, it's really nice seeing the national carriers all lined up next to each other. You've got Singapore, Qatar, Philippines and Cathay in the distance. If only we left our national conflicts to the sporting fields and fights over airport landing slots at Heathrow and LAX, then the world would be a much happier place. There's two shower suites available, which is really helpful if you've spent the day in Ho Chi Minh City's fairly sticky humid weather and a hairdryer near the basin. On the way to my gate, I stumbled across another Lotus Lounge. It seemed perfectly fine, although a little older. 
while both lounges were fairly empty when I was there, I've heard that they can get crowded. So if you do arrive and find there's no room, it's probably worth checking out the other one. The food and drink options very much look the same, although I was asked to stop filming, so I can't show you more. I'm not really sure why some staff get so upset about people filming their flights, as I'm giving them free advertising, but at least they were polite about it and everyone else seemed friendly during the flight. And here's our aircraft, one of 14 Airbus A350-900s in the Vietnam Airlines fleet. This is their flagship aircraft in an increasingly new and modern fleet consisting of 787-9s uh, and 10s and A321s being replaced by NEOs. The boarding process was very smooth and I was one of the first on board, which I was keen to do so that I could film the cabin without showing too many faces of other passengers. There are two different cabin layouts in the A350 and this is the newer one, although both are in a 1 to 1 layout and seem equally as good. If you're traveling as a couple, then there's the middle seats for you or if you've had enough of each other or traveling alone, then the window seats are best and they all have direct aisle access. And here's my seat 6 Kangaroo, which is the phonetic alphabet Australian revision. The cabin has a very spacious feeling to it, and that's likely in part to there being no overhead storage bins in the middle, so be aware of that if you do have a lot of carry-on luggage. Shortly after I sat down, a crew member bought a warm, wet towel to clean up my face. And that was followed up with the option of juice, water, or sparkling wine. There were also newspapers, including the government's English language paper, which explained how amazing the government were, which I was quite impressed with. Next are slippers and an amenity kit. Inside the kits are these stickers to let the crew know your meal preference, although I told them my preference when they were taking my order. There's a comb, which is something I haven't used for around 15 years, moisturizer, lip balm, toothbrush and paste, an eye mask and some socks. Let's look around the seat, and above there's lights, but no individual overhead air vents, which is a pity, although quite common these days. I still prefer the option of having a steady stream of air, keeping my head cool. In front of you is this touchscreen, which unfortunately does have to be folded up for landing and takeoff. There's a coat hanger hook, and down on the side is an adjustable armrest, and this storage hold, which is surprisingly deep. Moving back in front of you is this ledge and storage space behind it. There's a universal power plug, a storage spot for a water bottle and reading material. Above that is a fold-out table which felt fairly sturdy, and this ledge to store a whole lot of things, although it's fairly slippery so I wouldn't rest too much there. There's the window with the old-fashioned window shade, and next to you is space for the headphones. Moving further around are the buttons for the seats, a USB port and plugs for the headphones and a remote control for the in-flight entertainment and a few other functions like the call bell and lights. And finishing up, there's this adjustable reading light and an armrest. Here's the headphones, which are average I guess and not noise cancelling. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board Vietnam Airlines. We backed out and I'll quickly show you through the in-flight entertainment. Now there's no Wi-Fi available either. The image quality was reasonable and the screen responds quickly to touch. The content probably was lacking so I'd encourage you to bring your own stuff, especially if you have a longer connection to North America or Europe. After a short taxi, the engine spooled up and we took off into the dark and light show that is Ho Chi Minh City, which Wikipedia tells me has a population of 9 million people. That's all the lights.
Shortly after takeoff, there were these brightly lit objects on the ground. They possibly look like sunset reflecting off water, although it seemed too dark for that. If anyone knows what they are, then please comment below. As it was a late departure around 10pm, the meal service began immediately, which I appreciated as I was keen to get to sleep shortly afterwards. For the appetizer, I went with a fish roll with lalot leaves, prawn with lemongrass and pomelo salad, which tasted nice and was well presented. I went with two pieces of garlic bread, although standard breads were also offered. To speed up the meal, dessert came at the start and this was the Vietnamese style sweet soup. I was keen to try the cocktails, so I went with the Saigon Sunlight, which was whiskey and lemonade, which I'm told is as cool as the morning sunshine in flourishing Saigon. By the way, Saigon is the old name for Ho Chi Minh City. In fact, the airport's code is SGN. Then for the main course, I went with the grilled pork loin with crab cake and steamed rice. And another cocktail, the Hello Vietnam, which was Campari with orange juice. And after that, I had the third signature drink, the Red River, which is also Campari, with a little bit more bitter and orangey, I think. Now they also set up a mini bar in the forward galley where you can help yourself. After all of this excitement, it was time to have a nap, so I did. The cabin was on the warmer side, and as I said earlier, there's no individual air vents, so I lost the socks. They do put this thin cover over the mattress, although I doubt it does a whole lot. The actual seat cushion underneath is perfectly soft enough though. There's two toilets at the front for the 29 business passengers, and here's one of them. They are certainly more spacious than the average aircraft toilet, and the ambience was lifted by this plastic green thing. It was clean, and there were toothbrushes and other amenities inside as well. I went back to sleep, and two hours before we were due to land, I was woken, and a wet towel was offered to again clean myself up. Drinks were also offered and I had some orange juice. It would have been around 8am local time and the view outside was pretty magnificent. The harsh Australian outback really does look like another planet, not that I've been to any other planets other than Perth, but this is what I would picture Mars to look like. Now here's the breakfast, which is making me hungry while I'm editing the video. I went with the pho bo, which is Vietnamese beef noodle soup. Now I wouldn't usually eat beef or soup for breakfast, but this was all a part of the experience. There was also fresh fruit, which was crisp and tasty, and this muesli with half a grape. By the way, for those interested, here are the full menus. You can skip 20-ish seconds ahead to continue the video. There was also this peach danish, and unfortunately the espresso machine was broken so I had to have standard airplane coffee, which tasted like airplane coffee, and lotus green tea. So how was the flight? Look my attitude with these types of videos is that I'll present you with the experience and let you decide for yourself as your perspective might be different to mine. But overall, it's good, and when you consider how much cheaper it is than many other airlines, it's probably actually really good. In many ways, it's like a Ford Focus. No, it's not as good as an A-Class or a 1 Series, but it's 50% of the price, and yet it's probably 80% as good as those other two. We flew south past the airport and then spun around flying over the Royal National Park, which provided a great view of a perfect day down below, with the Illawarra in the very distance. The A350 itself is a great aircraft and you really notice the increased, but in a good way, cabin humidity and you arrive feeling far less dehydrated than when you flew on the older A330s, 777s or 747s. The seat itself is great. It doesn't have the sliding doors of some new business seats, but that's fine. It's spacious, there's adequate storage space and the mattress is soft enough to sleep on. The in-flight entertainment is lacking in content and I would encourage you to bring your own. While it does have some English language stuff, it's just not much. The crew were all very friendly and happy to help. I think the chief purser was a friendly lady named Van and I was well looked after. The food was fine and to be honest the alcohol selection was probably only average but still better than the booze at the airport which tasted quite vinegary-ish. Uh, which, while that does save the liver from one particular metabolic pathway, because the liver does convert alcohol to vinegar, amongst other things, in case you were wondering, it didn't taste great. Now I'd love to hear your thoughts on Vietnam Airlines Business Class product. 
Now, I'm not sure how reliable Skytrax's ratings are, but Vietnam Airlines do promote the fact that they got a four-star rating, which is a bit odd since it's a decent score, but not the best. It's like advertising your product as the Buzz Aldrin or the BMW 320, but with an M Sport Pack. It's decent, but not the best. In my opinion, this actually sums up Vietnam Airlines pretty well. They're not the best, but they're pretty good, and with cheap prices, they're actually very good. I'd certainly love to be the second man on the moon or drive a 320i, or even a cheap Ford Focus. Now hopefully you've understood my reasonably bizarre analogies and enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.